Hi, my name is Sasha. Welcome to my channel. In my last Azure step-by-step -step video, I was showing how to configure a single Azure SQL database to avoid failures in case of any regional disaster or large-scale outage by using the feature ActiveG replication. But if you want to protect several individual SQL databases or SQL database elastic pools at once, autophagia groups should be the feature of your choice. It's a declarative abstraction on top of existing ActiveG replication designed to simplify deployment and management of geo-replicated databases at scale. And if this is your first time here on that channel and you want to learn more about advanced analytics, machine learning or cloud computing, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So let's dig right into that sample. I'm in the Azure portal and let's, since we want to do a G replication, start with a single SQL database. I selected already the right subscription and the resource group I create for that Azure step-by-step -step videos. And let's give that database a name. Let's call it DemoDB. And I also have to create a new server. And I'm calling that Azure step-by-step -step SQL Server Northeast. Specify a name for the admin user as well as typing the password in twice. And of course, selecting a region, in this case, North Europe. And I'm not using the feature to auto enable Azure services to access that server. Just click OK. And this time I want to configure the database. And in this case, I'm picking a general purpose machine, vCore based approach. So I'm using the latest generation, but picking because of cost, the lowest possible option in terms of vCores and the max data size, click apply. And I'm fine with that just to do, use this time a different server approach. Additional settings, I want to use the sample database, so the AdventureWorks database, collation is fixed in that case. I don't want to start that free advanced data security trial. I don't want to specify any tags. Just reviewing what I clicked so far, and that looks good. And I'm going to click create to create that server. So the server has already been provisioned and I just need to wait for the database. But in that case, I can close that this is running in the background and add some additional databases. So let's select SQL database, making sure that I have the right subscription and resource group. Give that database a name, in this case, pool db1. Let's call it that way. And I can pick the existing server. So let's pick that. But in this case, I want to have that as elastic pool. So I need to create a new elastic pool. Call it my elastic pool. Click OK. And the server is, of course, pretty much fixed. So I just uh, need to at least tweak that a little bit. So that's fixed, two cores for the pool. Any additional settings? I want to restore an existing database. Don't want to start the trial. Don't want to add any tags. And I just have to review what I want to create. So a pool with one database and click Create again. So deployment is complete. Let's add a third and last database. Clicking the plus sign, choosing a date SQL database, making sure that subscription and resource group is fine. And again, give that database a name, call it demo pool db2 and picking the same server and that I want to pick a pool. The pool is already there. So using the existing pool in the additional settings, I want to restore the demo database, not start the trial, no tags. And after I reviewed everything, I click on create. And here we go. So we've got our database. Let's close those dialogs and refresh my resource group. So here we go. Three databases, one elastic pool, which contains those two databases and the logical server. So let's click on the server, review the databases. So those two, which are pooled, the single one also can view the database pool itself. And that looks good. And I want to have an easy way to fail over all three databases to a second region. For that reason, I'm using failover groups. So let's click on failover groups, add another one, and I have to specify a central name for that failover group, the one I'm using while connecting to that failover group. So let's just call it Azure Step-by-Step -Step SQL Server. I have to specify a secondary server, create a new one, call it Azure Step-by-Step -Step SQL Server West Europe, specify an admin login and of course a password. And last but not least, the right region, so West Europe. Don't want to allow all services to access that server. And then I can specify what policy I want to pick, in this case, automatic. And the grace period I'm allowing, one hour is fine. I can specify also longer ones, but one hour looks good. And then if I want, I can specify the whole list 
of databases. I want to select all of them. And it says that the SST pool doesn't exist on the West European server. So I can click on that and just create that with the same settings. It's okay. And now it's creating an elastic pool on the secondary server. And then I click on select and on create. Great, and everything has been created successfully. So I've got my failover group. If I go into that group, I see my primary and my secondary server. See that it's set to automatic failover as well as my one hour grace period. And I've got two endpoints which I can use to connect to that failover group. And looking into databases within that group, I see all those three databases on both sides. Well, that looks good. And I can go into changing configuration if I want to, or for example, forcing a failover. Do I really want to do that? Yes, please. And now once again, I am testing my failover to the other side, which will take around about 30 seconds to a minute. And then the new region should be online and the old one should be read, uh, yeah, read only. And here we go, failover succeeded. So now West Europe is my primary and North Europe my secondary. And again, I can directly connect to that central endpoint. And I can, if I want to add further databases, currently I have nothing, or remove databases from that failover group, for example, the whole Elastic Pool or my single database. So I hope you liked that short tutorial. And if yes, please give me a thumb up. And if you want to have any other topic covered, please use the comment section below and let me know what you think and how I can either improve my channel or add further topics you want to see covered. So, see you soon.